Ghana's inflation rate has risen from more than 15% in February to 19.4% in March. The central bank raised interest rates last month to try to curb rampant price rises, which analysts warn could plunge one of West Africa's largest economies into crisis. Ghana is endowed with a wealth of crafts workers, artisans of all spheres, from bead making, sculpturing, basket weaving to construction, have plied their trade in the region for many centuries, long beyond the migration of major ethnic groups to settle in this West African coastal nation. The tradition have lived on till this day, as it has been passed on from generation to generation. My curiosity to know more about the current state of the local Ghanaian crafts industry led me to two young entrepreneurs weaving their way through the cane and bamboo craft as well as wood sculpturing and basket weaving industry. Both young men have moved from the northmost part of the country to down south Accra, the capital, to broaden their horizon in their businesses. My name is Joseph Amwakwata, and on this episode of the Kente Business Journal, I'm delving into the economy of the local arts and crafts industry and what the average craft worker faces on a daily basis. Every home consists of at least one furniture or the other. In a more affluent home, you are sure to see more artworks beyond just furniture. But for all of these to exist, it has to take the artisan's creativity and skill. For the cane and bamboo crafts, it begins by harvesting the rattan, a wild parasite-like climbing palm plant belonging to the Kalamodi subfamily from the wild tropical forest. Together with harvested bamboo, they transport it mostly from what is today known as the Ahafo Western and Western North regions of Ghana down to several timber markets scattered all around Accra. It is from any of these markets that Kaba, Atawage, and the over 1,000 artisans in the city go to purchase raw materials for their work. My name is Kaba Atawage. I am a cane, bamboo, and rattan artisan. I started this company somewhere 2019-2020, but rigorously began it in 2020 in the peak of the COVID-19 situation. It was so terrible, I had to take it extremely serious for doing everything and take it seriously. It wasn't easy, but by consistency and by the grace of God, we are here today. For a simple, let's say, chair, you first get your frame done, usually with wood or sometimes metal, in the mold of your preferred design. Then turn to the rattan, which by now has been smoothened into a cane split into two to get a flat, which is then woven with the aid of wood glue and nails into the beautiful patterns all round the frame. The final product is then painted with an insecticide known as dustburn to protect the work from termites and other wood evading insects. Forward thinking artisans like Kaba employs ways of protecting the environment as he uses old mattresses and recycles them into comfortable pillows covered with colorful African prints fabrics to give it that authentic touch. Despite the intensity of the labor, manufacturers like Kaba on the production and distribution channel tend to earn very little. He tells us what he thinks might be the problem. The majority of the cost or the cost factor is with the people who bring the raw materials from the source. They go there to bring these materials and they are stopped on the way and charge huge sums of money for whatever you don't know what they are being charged for. When these suppliers come, they pass on that cost, those funds that they paid, to we the buyers. And we in turn also pass it on to the final consumer, who is the person buying the product. And if the price is so high up there, it's going to deter people from patronizing. 
and that means a lot of my people are going to be without works. If people are not patronizing, others will not be coming. If others are not coming, we are not making revenue. If revenue is not coming, a lot of people are likely to turn to crime as, a, 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 as a, an alternative. You know, as it is with farming, the farmer does all the dirty work, all the work, and get little for the works that he does. It is the same with this work. We do all the suffering, everything with the cost, and a few people on the distribution channel are the ones making the most money from this. It doesn't encourage us at all. If the diaspora or people living abroad can connect us, because they know where they sell these things, or even if not linking us to the buyers directly, be a link between us, what we do here, and markets abroad. That will help us. The challenge doesn't end there. The hand-woven cane and bamboo furniture artisans are spread all around Accra in order to get closer to the potential customers. But this has left them at the mercy of private property owners who eject them mostly without notice. Those on major roadsides are left exposed to vehicular accidents and all sorts of related hazards. In 2015, the government of Ghana, recognizing the potential of the industry, made available a two-hectare land at Aimensa, just at the outskirts of the main city, for cane and bamboo artisans. The facility, officially named the Bamboo Cane and Return Crafts Village, was sponsored by the Millennium Development Authority with support from the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources at a tune of some 416,000 US dollars. Yet, this facility remains virtually empty, as at the time this video was made. From the artisan's point of view, the facility lacks enough sheds to house the over 1,000 artisans in a crowd. Checks by the Graphic Business newspaper in 2017 recorded only two sheds constructed at the site. Its location is another major reason why the facility has failed to attract artisans. It is understandable why they would refuse to go there because it is basically like throwing these artisans away from the city where all economic activities take place. In order to solve this loggerhead, a brighter suggestion would be for the leaders of government to consult with the Bamboo and Return Association on a much more suitable location for their work. The need for an organized market area and system which would in turn churn out tax revenue for the state is very crucial to the survival of the handmade furniture crafts industry as a whole. This would be a win-win situation for all parties. Coupled with all these challenges, Kaba would still have one last more barrier making his work much more difficult. Kyphoscoliosis. This, a medical condition where the spine abnormally curves on the coronal planes and on the sagittal plane. He wasn't born with a condition and had a very normal childhood. But midway through his teenage, he was diagnosed with a disease. Kaba tells me that he hasn't been deterred from chasing his dreams. He is currently a student at the Ghana Institute of Journalism, aiming to work as a journalist in the future. He remains optimistic and gives thanks to the craft work as he uses the proceeds to fund his education. Being differently abled and then being an artisan in addition is it's not a, a, a joke. It is very, very difficult because one thing that will take a lot of your profit one is transportation where an ordinary person or let me say an able person can go without necessarily needing transportation you you will have to do that to get there at the end of the day you go through all the processes of getting the materials where you even have to go and get the materials is even a problem and there is or there are no structures there are no options there are no incentives for Ghanaian entrepreneurs, not to talk of entrepreneurs living with disabilities. It is, it is very, very difficult being an entrepreneur in Ghana. And it is even worse being an entrepreneur and being 
disabled. It is not a joke. Everything, uh, but you see, sad thing is, you go through all these difficulties, trying to establish your business, no help at all. Even when you need loan, where are you going to get that loan? The banks are not even willing to give loans to anyone to start anything. The government of Ghana says it is going on an entrepreneurship drive. I don't see where that drive is happening. Maybe it is happening in other jurisdictions I'm not aware, but not with us. But we would have been grateful that at least, like, some kind of special attention should be paid to people living with disabilities, especially those trying to do something for themselves. I see a lot of people like myself on the road begging, and it breaks my heart. There are times people see you, they think, oh, you are just like the other ones that are on the street begging. But those people, those disabled people on the road, on the street, most of them are so, so talented. You'll be, you'll be surprised what they can do with their hands. But there is no help of any sort. Someone, those people, some of them use just 100 cities, just 200 cities to start something for themselves. Unfortunately, something like that doesn't exist in Ghana. Social services are dead, and it is even worse for people living with disabilities. The employability of the handcrafts cane and bamboo furniture industry is a very achievable feat. Already, over 1,000 artisans plying their trade in Accra have employed the services of other skilled personnel such as tailors, painters and welders. Just imagine how competitive this local industry could be on the global market if it is well organized and marketed. Cabo Fela highlights the realities of being an employer in the sector. Today, I have one person that works directly for me. That is direct employment. With the indirect employment opportunities, there are people who do a little, little carpentry staff, framing of chairs and what have you. It is a form of employment that the little that I've begun is providing. So if um, there was something done, this kind of work can actually lessen the burdens on the Ghanaian economy. One, a lot of people will be taken off the streets if this work is affordable. The materials that we work with, they are very, very, very expensive. An average chair, is costing not less than 350 Ghana cities. People like the product. People admire the work. But the affordability doesn't allow them to buy. Affordability not allowing them to buy means a lot of people are not going to be interested in this kind of work. Because they have to wait for a very long time for one other. And they can't survive with that. So a lot of people, or the youth that we began this works with, a lot of them have just decided to go away. We no longer do this. But considering this kind of works that we do to wood, purely woodwork, you are saving the environment, you are saving forestry in addition. The seeming absence of the Ghanaian hand-woven cane and bamboo furniture industry on the global competitive market is a clarion call to all stakeholders. To be able to get to the level of all these top global producers, a lot of systemic resets needs to happen. And it starts right here. In the part two of this episode, Isaac Ensor, my guest, navigates me through the vibrant art of basket weaving and wood sculpturing. Reporting for the Kingdom Business Journal, my name is Joseph Awakwata from Accra, Ghana.